Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 198th episode of Sector Spotlight for Monday the 20th of November. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We're going to have a short week. Thursday is Thanksgiving. Friday, most of you are taking the day off. Uh, enjoy the long weekend. So let's get started. Um, it also means that it is Black Friday week and Stock Charts has a uh, probably its biggest sale uh, uh, every year. And running for the entire week, uh, you will see the banners across the top of the site when you log in. Uh, so if you don't have an account yet, grab the opportunity. If you already have an account, grab the opportunity to extend your stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. In this episode of Sector Spotlight, we're going to talk about markets, we're going to talk about asset class rotation, and we're going to talk about sector rotation. Just as a quick reminder, as I just said in my intro, when you log into the site, you will see the Black Friday announcement, the Black Friday banner. Um, if you've seen it, you can tick it off, you can tick it away. And when you bring up a new chart, you will get an additional banner, which is the um, alert, the uh, to remind you that the new Sharp Charts workbench is uh, available to you in beta. And I'm actually going to use this new Sharp, Sharp Charts workbench in this episode. For now, I'm going to take those away. And we're going to play around with some RRGs, which are relative rotation graphs. And <clears throat> as usual, I have the weekly RRG on the left and the daily on the right. I want to start with asset classes, of course. So here's your asset class daily, and here's the weekly. Now the first thing that catches the attention is the very long tail for Bitcoin, which is basically distorting the image. Here is the weekly, and you can see how it's shooting off from the bottom left to the top right. What it means is that Bitcoin at the moment is actually really, really strong and is a strong outperformer versus our benchmark in the asset class domain, which is the VBI and X index. So for this chart, I'm going to, we, we know that it's there, we know that it's outperforming, we know that it's strong. So to give a little bit more screen real estate to the other asset classes, I'm going to tick off this, this line. I'm going to do the same here on the daily. What you see here is that um, strength of Bitcoin, which is way to the right. And what you also see is that it's inside the weakening quadrant, but all, already curling back up. And look at the level of the JDK errors ratio. It's about 108 and how far it is, uh, how, the distance from uh, the rest of the asset classes on the, on the canvas. Uh, but also the distance from the 100 level on the JDK RS ratio line. So this has a very good chance, it's, all, it's already starting to do this, to curl back up inside the weakening and rotate back up into leading. And we know that that is one of the strongest rotations uh, possible. So here also, because of the distortion, it's taking up a lot of my real screen real estate, I'm going to tick off Bitcoin fit the chart and now I can actually see a little bit better what's going on. Now, again, two that I can sort of take away immediately is DJP and GSG. Those are the commodity indices. They, uh, they went through a pretty good stint and you can see that they're now starting to lose momentum again. We're gonna take a look at the uh, commodity chart in a minute when we do the individual charts. But this is not the strongest rotations that I would expect. And um, GSG is very heavy on, uh, on energy, very heavy on oil. DJP as well, but a little less. But you can see that they are rolling over and they're starting to lose relative momentum. Uh, and they're still coming out of that long bottom. But to be honest, I had expect a little bit more from the commodity area. And uh, it's also displayed here on the daily RRG where you can see that both GSG and DJP are quite rapidly heading into that lagging quadrant. So not the best of um, outlook for uh, the, commodity, uh, the commodity area, commodities in general. So I'm also going to tick off GSG and DJP in this chart, fit it here, and I'll do the same on the daily RRG. 
and then fit it here and now we can take a look at the core rotation if you wish which is the rotation between stocks and bonds and we can see that here on the weekly spy so stocks has gone through a setback but has started to slowly pick up again that is visualized in the daily RRG where you can see the rotation of spy through um, lagging very briefly through improving and then back into leading where it's now sort of leveling off and the opposite rotations for the fixed income tails the fixed income ETFs uh, corporate bonds government bonds and high yield bonds and on the daily you can see how they're moving opposite of that tail for the S&P 500 the basic message here is that stocks seem to be back into the lead again. We had a couple of weeks ago a situation, and I'll show you that, that direct comparison in a minute, where it looked as if, well, it was, uh, bonds were taking over. That situation has now reversed, and stocks are back in the lead again. Um, and I think that's a good thing overall. Finally, we've got the US dollar. US dollar picking up strength, but over the last couple of weeks, starting to... Um, to deteriorate again the weekly and the daily tail are kind of opposite um, you see how the weekly is inside leading that's expressing strength for the US dollar but losing relative momentum and here you see the opposite where it's in lagging but well not yet not really but trying to pick up relative momentum again so these are going against each other and we'll have to wait and see how that pans out whether this daily tail will be strong enough to keep the weekly on the right or whether this is the beginning and the daily is going to drag the weekly back down there's no way to tell you need to take a better look at the individual charts which we will do in a minute but for now the uh, overall us dollar strength as we've seen it over last weeks seems to be uh, at least slowing down if not reversing but we'll take a look in a minute Let's take a look at some of these individual charts. I brought back all the tails on the weekly RRG so we can sort of work our way through them one by one. Again, let's start with the Bitcoin chart. I've got, I brought up the Bitcoin chart here and here you can see the new layout of the new Sharp chart workbench. You will see that there is a, a change in the controls of the chart. You can see that the settings are a little bit more extensive you've got more tools here so please feel free to read to to check that out play around with it and uh, and above all uh, share your thoughts and, and ideas with us because we're still working on it and um, you know every good idea is one so here's the bitcoin chart and you can see that that huge move that started when we took out that overhead resistance around 30 31k and we're still working our way higher here is the relative strength versus vbi and x and um, that's obviously moving higher and that's what's pushing that that tail rapidly into the leading quadrant as you can see here i can bring up by the way the uh, new workbench will take all your old chart lists as nothing has changed so i i selected my chart list here and here are all the charts and i can just pick them off my um, chart list very easily at the top or toggle through them browse through them using the arrow keys so here's the daily chart of bitcoin and here is i think um, uh, what, what could be a little bit of a setback because we've had that massive rally and you can see that the rsi is diverging although it has already come down it's it's well below 70 again but you can see the kind of rollover deterioration in the macd so there is there is some some pause it's at least inside the bitcoin us dollar price movement it could mean that it remains sideways and and just move gradually between let's say 35 and 37 and a half but i wouldn't be surprised if you see a little bit more of a setback and that's where the old support the old resistance area will come back in as support and i i'm marking that around between 30 and 32 uh, the higher a new low comes in, the stronger that trend is actually. So keep an eye on that. If Bitcoin takes out this little falling 
um, resistance line, then obviously that is the signal for a new acceleration uh, to higher levels. But for the mean, for the for for, for the time being, um, these divergences are at least should be taken as a warning signal. I think. Let's done with uh, Bitcoin. So let's take a look at the US dollar. Uh, here's the US dollar tail. Let me bring up my US dollar charts. So here is the dollar index and uh, you can already see that we had that rally. We rolled over and we're now uh, into a, I think, very serious corrective move. So we'll have to see because this move is really strong from well below 100 to over 106. We're now coming down, so we have to wait and see where a new low will be coming in. Again, just like Bitcoin, the higher that low comes in, the stronger it is. If we bring this to the uh, euro dollar chart, then you can see that that is now rising quite rapidly. And we have to, to see um, where that actually ends. It looks like we're kind of getting to some sort of resistance uh, around 110, 109.50, 110. But the move seems very strong to me, so I wouldn't be surprised if it goes a little bit further. If we take a look at the weekly version of that chart, then um, we see that, I mean, this series of higher highs and higher lows is broken. So we got a first lower low, but we don't have a lower high yet. So on the edge on what this means for Euro dollar. So for the time being, um, I would say remain very close to home at any positions, be very careful with it. Let's take off US dollar and then go to the commodity tails. So here's DJP. Let's bring on DJP. Here's the DJP chart. And you can see that it is moving sideways. You can see how relative strength started to move higher. But here you can see why it is actually rolling over and the RRG lines are rolling over because it's not holding up that new move higher in terms of relative strength. Not necessarily a new downtrend, but it's quite disappointing that we're not holding up this increase in relative strength. So for the time being, uh, I think DJP and we'll see in a minute GSG uh, are very likely to move a little bit more sideways uh, for the time being. Remember, they are coming out of a very long base. So I think it takes a little longer than we initially anticipated, but um, long term commodities are still good. Short term, sideways, maybe a little bit more corrective moves. If we look at GSG, you can see a similar move on a different location on the chart. Oh, let's get GSG. Here's GSG. You can see the same, taking it out, not managing to get higher. Looks like breaking a little bit of an uptrend line, but here also the improvement in relative strength was visible, seems to be busted right now when we you know, created this little double top. So for the time being, the improvement of, uh, for commodities seems to be uh, off or at least on hold for the time being. I'm going to take a look at, um, let's do SPY and then GOV. That's the, uh, that's the gen generic all maturities on the yield curve. And you can see how that relative strength moved sideways and now started to roll over. And that's displayed in the RRG lines. The RS ratio is still below 100, which positions GOV on the left-hand side. And you can see how RS momentum is above 100, but rolling over. And that's why GOV is in the improving quadrant, but losing relative momentum. That's exactly what you see right here. Uh, and that's picking up that trend here, moving sideways. And it, yeah, if it deteriorates again, it'll start to move lower. And from a price perspective, we're back in the old support zone. We broke, this is 22, a little over 22 US dollars. Uh, we broke that support. We're now getting back above it. So it could be that GOV is in for uh, a little more improvement. But the relative strength line indicates, suggests that if we're indeed going to see that improvement, the other asset classes and predominantly SPY in this case, stocks, will improve even further. That's, that's the message that we're getting from this RRG in combination with the price chart and the relative strength. And then 
we go to SPY and we'll start with SPY with the stock market against VBI and X and there we see the reverse of GOFT. We, we broke to new relative highs, kind of consolidated, tested the old resistance as support and that now seems to have uh, stopped and we see the first little bit of improvement and here we see the opposite of what we saw with GOFT. We have the RS ratio line still above 100, positioning SPY on the right hand side of the graph and we see how RS momentum, relative momentum, is slowly starting to pick up and that's what you see why that yellow tail is starting to curl back up. Uh, in due course, very likely starting to move back into the leading quadrant or toward the leading quadrant. So that's an improvement for uh, for SPY. If we go to the uh, to the weekly chart of SPY, then you can see that improvement as it has been going on for one, two, three, four weeks already. Um, you can see the improvement in the indicators. RSI bounced off that 30 level, bounced higher, and we're now approaching the new resistance area. So the new area to watch for SPY is the resistance area. Uh, around 460 I would say. 460 is probably going to be a very important resistance level for SPY. When we break it, super cool, really nice and you know going for the next stage. If we can't break it, if the market's going to stall around 460, then it'll be very important where we will see that first higher low coming in. That's why I need to uh, keep an eye on. And you better do that on a daily chart. And here you can see how actually strong that market is at the moment. This is this. I'm recording it during market hours. So this is already uh, Monday the 20th. Oh, you can see it, Monday 20. And you can see that again, we have a very good day and it looks as if we're taking out this intermediate resistance level here around 454. And this is the 460 that we're talking about. So the first hurdle towards 460 seems to be you know, under attack right now, if that's the right word. Um, all things look pretty good. In case of a correction, I think that the gap area here between 440 and 445 will act as a very important support level. Given the strength of the move, given the likely turnaround for stocks to start moving higher again towards the end of the year, if we're going to get back into that gap area, gap support area, probably a good level, a good area to look for re-entry possibilities. Anyway, um, the overall picture here is that uh, stocks seem to be picking up versus bonds again. And let me get to that one-on-one -on -one chart. Here is SPY versus IEF. And I remember very well that we discussed this break here and, it, you know, uh, bonds taking over. Well, that lasted a week, if that. And then we rapidly reversed, got back into the range, and now we're going out of that range to the upside with a little flimmer of resistance here around 4.9. That's the extreme high that we saw here. But as you know, I'm more of looking for resistance in where uh, a majority of highs and majority of touch points is. And it looks as if we're starting to take that out. Um, this is last week. We're already above it. And this week, today, we're already continuing to move higher. This all suggests that um, stocks are ready to continue their outperformance versus bonds, uh, I would say at least in the next couple of weeks. Now onwards to sector rotation. Uh, the weekly ROG on the left, the daily ROG on the right. I'm going to rank them based on their names so I can go side by side and look at the different positions of the tail. So let's start with communication services, Axel C. You can see that the weekly is inside the leading quadrant. It's kind of stalling right here. Um, today wasn't necessarily a good day because you see it kind of rolling over that last notch, but that is only for Monday this week. What's more positive is the tail on the daily ROG for, uh, for Axel C, which is just pointed into the improving quadrant and starting to move back to lagging. So I'm still pretty confident that XLC is on the right track and the, the daily tail will push into the leading quadrant and it'll keep uh, the weekly tail on the right hand side. Because especially when you look at where XLC is compared to all the others, it's except for XLE, one of the highest reading 
sectors, one of the highest ranking sectors on the JDK RS ratio scale. Let's go to XLY, consumer discretionary. Here's consumer discretionary. And you can see that the weekly tail has moved into the lagging quadrant. It has actually started to travel at a negative RRG heading. And with the daily, despite the fact that it's inside the leading quadrant, but it has already rolled over. So when this weakness continues, it's very likely that it's going to push the weekly tail of XLY for the consumer discretionary sector further into the lagging quadrant. So that's not a super good sign for the discretionary sector. We go to staples, that's the opposite one. We can see how the weekly is picking up. It's actually traveling at a nice positive RRG heading between zero and 90 degrees. But the daily tail has just moved into the lagging quadrant and is rapidly losing uh, relative, relative strength on the RS ratio scale. The fact that XLP in the weekly is at a very low level, it's one of the lowest reading sectors combined with that weakness in the daily tail i don't think that uh, staples are in super good shape at the moment uh, especially because of the low reading on the rs ratio scale we go to energy that has been a very interesting sector recently you can see how that long tail is moving lower uh, from a strong stint through leading now back into the weakening quadrant gradually losing relative strength but still in terms of rs ratio the highest reading and you can see that the daily is inside lagging that's not that's not strange because what it, what, what you see here is this move lower on the weekly that's this rotation um, from actually leading through weakening and now into lagging but you can see that it is now starting to pick up a little bit and given the very high reading of XLE on the RS ratio scale it's very well possible that this if this strength continues this improvement in relative strength continues that it will eventually uh, pull the weekly XLE back up uh, into the leading quadrant what we need to what we, what we do need to see there to for that to happen is a slowdown in the decline and i think that this could be the first sign over the last five days it has moved kind of sideways it didn't continue to lose momentum it lost route strength but it stopped losing momentum and it's now starting to pick up momentum that process continues you will see the tail of xle shrinking it's now very long but you will see it shrinking and then start to turn over and rotate back into the leading quadrant when we see that in combination with a strong rotation for the energy sector on the daily rg i think that's the time to start thinking to get back into the energy sector again we look at financials <clears throat> both tails the weekly and the daily very close to the benchmark not a lot of alpha to be gained there xlf the financial sector is moving more or less in line with the s p 500. i don't think we will see a lot of um, excessive movement a lot of excess return to be gained in the financial sector at the moment if we go to healthcare then we see how that weekly tail has rolled over very clearly now inside the improving quadrant heading toward the lagging quadrant while the the daily tail is already inside the lagging quadrant picked up a little bit of relative momentum but it's continuing to move uh, lower on the rs ratio scale and i think that this will actually continue to drag this weekly tail lower so the healthcare sector seems ready for a, a continued underperformance versus the s p 500. Here is the industrial sector, and that's interesting. You, you can see how short that tail is. The daily tail, really, really short, means that it um, has not moved a lot. So we're already back here. Look at this. This is October 12th, so that's more than a month ago. You can see how that tail has shrunk to almost stationary and then moved into the lagging quadrant where it now is. And, roll back up and back down again so you see this erroneous rotation this an erroneous moves by that short tail um, is is signaling that it is in a relative uh, relative downtrend albeit not very strong and that's depicted by the weekly rg as well which has now picked up slightly but 
there is no there is no real um, confluence confirmation of both tales. So for XLI, I don't think there is a lot going on in the next couple of weeks. Here's materials. Uh, that's another story. You can see how that tail rotated from improving into lagging, where it just arrived. And if we look at the daily tail, you can see that this actually rolled over, shrunk a little bit, but it's confirming the relative weakness as we see it on the weekly tail. So for the material sector, the expectation is to continue its underperformance versus the S&P 500 in the next couple of weeks. Uh, here's real estate, and I remember very well, I think last, it was last, last week's episode, um, I, I called for uh, weakness in real estate, uh, one of the weaker sectors, um, uh, according to the sector rotation model, a lot of weakness expected. And all of a sudden, of course, the day after the video, uh, XLR skyrocketed, jumped higher, uh, and somebody made a comment on the YouTube video. By the way, keep them coming. I love it. I love to interact. Uh, but the thing is, that sector rotation model is a is is mu is much longer forward looking than uh, two or three days of performance in the market. And I think that's exactly what you see here. If you look at the XLRE tail on the weekly chart, it's it's still very low uh, reading on the RS ratio scale. You see how it has moved into the improving quadrant, but again at a very short tail. You see it moving back slightly, but it's still very low reading. And if you look at the rotation on the daily, despite that, that strong jump that we saw last week, look at that tail. We moved into leading, rolled over, and then we're now you know, inside the weakening quadrant and pointing towards lagging. Well, I don't think um, Axelry is now all of a sudden one of the strongest sectors. On the contrary, I think it's still one of the weaker sectors. And I hope you agree with me when you look at the individual chart of the real estate sector, especially when you look at the relative strength versus the S&P 500. Now here's for something special. This is the technology sector. Look at that weekly tail, how that rotated from, I need to actually zoom it out a little bit, from leading through weakening and back up into leading and actually moving to new all-time highs. So that is a really strong tail. That's a really strong sector. Uh, and lo and behold, it's the biggest sector in the market that says something. And if you look at the daily tail, this is absolutely confirming what's going on in that weekly tail. So you can see here how the daily tail of XLK did a similar move, leading, weakening, back up to leading, and now heading, heading higher on the RS ratio scale. As a matter of fact, it's the strongest sector uh, in terms of RS ratio on the daily RRG. So XLK actually uh, in very good shape at the moment, I think. And then finally, we've got utilities. And here you see utilities, the improvement was there. You can see how today's act price action has actually started a little rollover, but it's more pronounced when you look at the daily RRG, where you can see that tail rapidly deteriorating from leading through weakening and now hitting into the lagging quadrant. So very likely the deterioration that you see here on that daily chart will pull that weekly tail around. And if we bring that back to offense, defense sensitive, you can see how um, utilities, staples and healthcare. So staples probably, well, still the lowest reading. Healthcare is definitely rolled over and utilities, um, so here's healthcare, definitely rolled over and here's utilities starting to roll over. So defensive sectors um, kind of out of favor. And if we look at the confirmation here, then you see staples pushing into the lagging quadrant. You see healthcare inside the lagging quadrant, slight pickup, still moving to the left. And you can see utilities moving into the lagging quadrant. So there is no support, no money is moving out of the defensive sectors. And usually that's a pretty good sign for um, the market as a whole. The, I think that the rotation, as you see it in the technology sector, is absolutely underscoring that. The only thing that is not up to par is the rotation for consumer discretionary, which is inside the lagging quadrant here. 
and in leading here but rolling over. So if I got to summarize this, um, and, and as I said in my discussion on the asset allocation charts, uh, we took we looked at SPY. Uh, we're kind of getting into a resistance zone and potentially maybe we will see some sort of a setback looking for a new higher low to get into place. I think that the consumer discretionary might be um, the sector to watch as it will be play a, a pretty crucial role in a further improvement for the market as a whole. As soon as you see consumer discretionary start to pick up in terms of relative strength uh, as well as on the price chart and it gets back in line with the technology sector then you will have the two biggest sectors uh, of the market of the S&P 500 moving higher and that will definitely be uh, a very good support for a broader market rally. Okay and then finally let's take a look at a few of the individual charts that we just discussed uh, through the RRGs. First what I want to discuss is materials XLB. Let me highlight that for you. It's rotating from improving back into lagging and we can see why. Here is the raw relative strength and you can see how that's dropping to its lowest level in the last at least three and a half four years that is visible on the chart and the resulting RRG lines are the RS ratio which is still way below 100 positioning XLB on the left hand side of the graph and the hiccup in relative momentum has come to an end. It's close to 100 and about to cross over, crossing over um, below the 100 line, pushing it into the lagging quadrant, which is confirmed by the weak raw relative strength, as you can see it on the ratio chart here. Price obviously not too bad. It just broke out of resistance. It broke above it. But as you can see, it's in a sideways trading range. And when that rally is not enough based on relative strength, it'll tell you that other sectors and the market are doing a better job at the moment. Communication services. For a long time, a very good sector already. And you can see how it has just broken above horizontal resistance and is now moving higher within the boundaries of its rising channel. Uh, the keen observer may have noticed that I've slightly adjusted my trend channel. I've now got one, two, three, four touch points on the lower boundary. That line was running uh, at a steeper angle previously but I think that it's now warranted that we have uh, a rising support line and here is your parallel your resistance defining your new trend channel and we're well inside that trend channel that's a good thing and then if you look at relative strength we're holding up above that rising support level and that's helping the uh, RRG lines to move higher and push XLC further into the leading quadrant. And our real estate our big friends in real estate. As you can see, a little hiccup in the tail here. Very low reading on the RS ratio scale. And if you look at the price chart, but especially the relative strength line, you can see that this is still, um, I would say this still qualifies as a solid downtrend. You can see how low the reading of the RS ratio is. And RS momentum is just hicking up a little bit. That's because of that little improvement here. But it's now running into what I call a double resistance area because we've got the old support line here that is now coming back as resistance and we've got the falling resistance that's connecting the last three major highs uh, and those two lines are converging here around 36 and a half. Unless XLRE will take out this double resistance and start moving higher, I will consider XLRE as one of the weaker sectors in the market. And then we have the three defensive sectors. So here is Staples, actually showing a pretty good tail from a heading point of view, moving to that northeastern direction. However, the reading on the RS ratio scale is still really low. It's the second lowest reading in the entire universe. And if you look at the price chart, we're bouncing against resistance coming off this former support level. So that's weakness or expected weakness from a price perspective and if you look at the relative strength line it's just pushing below a previous low uh, which will very likely soon be picked up by a, a more weakness in terms of relative momentum. Reading this chart makes me suggest or G suggests that this will roll over and uh, roll back down towards the lagging quadrant in the next couple of weeks. If you look at utilities kind of in the same boat so here's utilities um, today already saw the first flimmer of weakness coming in. 
Uh, again, here also utilities pushing against a former support level that's now acting as resistance. This is actually a lot stronger than the Staples chart that we just saw. And here you can see how that trend line, that RS line is still in a very strong downtrend. Um, and the only thing that happened is a pickup in relative momentum because the pace of the downtrend declined over the last couple of weeks, but the RS ratio reading is still very, very low. Uh, and all the possibilities to roll over before hitting the leading quadrant. And then finally, the healthcare sector, which has already rolled over and is pointing towards the lagging quadrant. And you can see how that is uh, translated in the, or well, based by the way, the RIG is translated from the uh, 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 relative strength line that you see here and the rolling over RRG lines, which are pushing the tail of XLV lower uh, and very rapidly into the lagging quadrant. Here also, just like staples and utilities, you see how healthcare sector uh, broke support and is now testing that same support level as resistance on the price chart. Technology, very clearly the strongest sector in the universe at the moment. Look at the rotation further into the leading quadrant, pushing into the leading quadrant, and this chart showing a very nice breakout to new all-time highs. That is a good chart. The relative strength line, uh, there is no doubt about the strength here. And these RRG lines, as you can see, have a long way to go before they reach the same level of relative strength that we saw a couple of weeks ago, months ago, sorry. Also, if you look at this chart, um, you could argue that this is some sort of a flag pattern. I, th I think that to be qualified as a, as a real flag, it needs to be more condensed. Uh, and usually Edward McGee labeled it on a daily chart, but the structure is kind of the same. So we're coming out of a trend, small consolidation, and now a move higher. This chart ticks all the boxes for more upside potential. And then finally, the last sector that I want to talk about with you is consumer discretionary. Look at the tail, which is moving into the lagging quadrant. We saw that before. And here is the price chart. Now, the price chart's not all that good. Uh, obviously, we had that quite a big rally over the last couple of weeks in line with the market. But if you look at relative strength, it wasn't enough. It's not outperforming the market. It was a rally, but it's not outperforming. So this is, a, a once again, a very good example of a market that's moving, or a sector that's moving higher, while relative strength is not doing much. And you can see that the RRG lines are, the RS ratio line is pushing below 100, uh, and so is our, uh, the RS momentum line. And that is pushing the tail into the lagging quadrant. Overhead resistance is plenty. We've got the old rising support line that'll come in probably somewhere between 70, 175. We've got the 175 overhead resistance level that we tested back in, when was that? Uh, July and again in September. So from a relative point of view, not the strongest sector at the moment. From a price point of view, very limited upside potential. However, it is one of the most important sectors in the market in terms of market capitalization. I'm trying to get my head around what's going on with all the sectors and the asset class rotation. So the asset class rotation tells me stocks are back on track, they're outperforming bonds. So that's a good thing. We should focus on stocks. If we look at the sectors, then we can see that traditional move out of defensive sectors, which is suggesting strength for the overall markets. It's definitely confirmed by the strong move in technology at the moment, but not yet by consumer discretionary. What I'm going to watch in the next couple of weeks is the development in the consumer discretionary sector, because I do think that consumer discretionary right now holds the key for broader market participation. As soon as we see further improvement in the consumer discretionary sector, and you see that bottoming out in terms of price, taking out resistance levels, and turning back up uh, on the RRG tail and the route strength in general, that'll be the sign for uh, a real move higher in the market, backed by both technology and consumer discretionary. And that wraps up Sector Spotlight for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please remember, Sector Spotlight is available on demand on the Stock Chart YouTube channel, usually recorded and uploaded on Mondays or Tuesdays. 
Feel free to share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below the video as usual. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week at a new episode of Sector Spotlight. Same time, same place.